Hi everyone, I am Sonia and this is my YouTube channel Sonia Psychology Classes. So today we are going to do one of the most important chapters that is research methods. Many students they think that research methods is a little boring or you know it's not the uh, true psychology related uh, you know content like abnormal psychology or cognitive processes or anything related to how mind works. So initially uh, students do find it a little boring but trust me this is one of the most important chapters because whatever you are doing in your grade 11 and 12 uh, all the studies that you are going to learn uh, every single answer is somewhere based on this research methods so if your research method is not strong enough uh, somewhere you might start having some problem so please uh, listen to this class very carefully and I have more videos on the same going forth so uh, what exactly are research methods so research methods are the methods of doing a research research means collecting data or information in a very strategic manner so there are certain strategies certain techniques that you follow in collection of the data and once you get this information you use it for the better understanding of a concept so research is important not just in psychology but in almost every field uh, wherever we need to collect data or uh, get the information uh, we need research so research is there for advertising companies for marketing uh, for if you're an entrepreneur you need to start your own business uh, in that case you definitely need to do research where you would know that you know what kind of business model you should set up so let's take an example here for example I am a, I'm an entrepreneur and I want to start producing manufacturing uh, or make a new model of a diaper so I need to do research to see that what kind of diaper products uh, a newborn uh, baby's mothers would prefer generally prefer so I would do a research only basis of that I would get the information from that I would collect the data from these new mothers and see that what kind of product that they actually would want is there you know is are they more into getting in uh, fragments of the mm -hmm. from the diapers or is it the softness or is it the anti rash or is it the elasticity that you know comforts the baby so these are my target audience and on that only if only if I ta target them and you know get the data from them information only then I'll be able to actually design my product and launch in the market. But if I'm not doing the research, I, you know, just carry out my product. I just launch my product without giving it a second thought or without any research, the product might fail altogether. So that is why research for any study is very very important because data and or the information that we say uh, gives us a better understanding of what we are going to study the next is a uh, use of children in uh, psychological research so when we're doing a psychological research uh, many a times we take children as the participants who are a part of the study the reason is there are two reasons one is that we are actually doing the research on children uh, we very early in the early stages uh, we are able to detect if there are any abnormalities or if they are facing any issues where they are you know for example getting bullied or any pressure is there or any kind of stress is there or their behavior has changed which is not very usual so what are these what is causing these changes so all these things are there where we want to study children um, or, or detect any kind of abnormality in the initial stages that is when we take children in the psychological research another is that children are less likely to manipulate or tamper with the results uh, they are you know they usually do not pretend or fake as much as adults can do so they are less on that we get very good quality data when we use children and the in the psychological research there are a lot many studies uh, that involve animals instead of human species uh, for psychological research. It has been seen around that uh, 7 to 8 percent of psychological researchers include animals and 90 percent of them are birds and rats. Only 5 percent out of these are just the bigger larger animals like chimpanzees, monkeys, or any other primates uh, it's easier to use the smaller animals and it's very common 
because it, it depends upon the content of the experiment uh, that whether a human being is to be used or which species would be more apt for the given experiment. Research has always been a part of psychology. Since beginning, the researches have been carried on by many scientists, many researchers. But back then, for psychological processes, whatever research was done, they were mostly considered or criticized for being very unscientific. Over the years, we have started using strategies or techniques and more refined tools uh, to measure a lot of cognitive processes and behavior. And now uh, we can say that psychological processes are more or measuring the psychological processes are more scientific in nature. There are three kinds of uh, research methods. One is qualitative method, quantitative method and mixed method research. Very easy, qualitative research. Qualitative research means the data that is collected, the information that is collected is very abstract and very non-numerical in nature. I'll just give you an example, you'll understand better. For example, you get a question paper in your exam and where you have to write big answers or maybe paragraphs or, you know, big essays are there which are not objective in nature. So they are not objective when your teacher reads the essay or the paragraph. They mark you on on uh, the basis of their own perception, how they feel about the paragraph or what they say. So maybe your know, one teacher likes the essay, like, wow, it's very good. But the other teacher says, no, you know, uh, there are a lot of grammatical mistakes or maybe the vocabulary is not that great used in the essay and so on. So there are different perspectives for that given thing. Same way, the qualitative research is very abstract in nature. There are no rights or wrongs or points given. Uh, it's usually like observing the behavior, the case studies, etc. are comes under the qualitative research. On the other hand comes in the quantitative research. Quantitative research is just like your MCQ questions that come in your exams. Here the points are given. It's either a one word or true false or uh, the MCQ options are given. So it's either right or wrong and it's very easy to analyze. So same way in quantitative research, whatever data is collected is more objective in nature. It's not subjective. It's more numerical based. So it's easy to uh, you know, analyze the data. Yeah. And third is the mixed method research. It is a mixture of, as the name suggests, of qualitative as well as the quantitative. Here are, uh, here are some of the examples that you can see for quantitative as well as qualitative uh, research. For quantitative, it's more of experimental researches and uh, some um, uh, of the uh, you know, the longitudinal studies, uh, any meta-analysis, surveys and questionnaires are one of the best examples for quantitative research. For qualitative, it's more like case study. Case study is what when you are researching on somebody's life or a group or a family for a very longer period of time where you are including their you're observing them, you're giving them in, uh, questionnaires, you're interviewing them, uh, you're observing them on their behavior and asking them a lot of questions. So for a very long period of time, that is for the um, uh, case studies as well as for some of the surveys 